There's a story about Minnie the Moocher. She was a red hot hoochie coocher. She was the roughest, toughest friend. But Minnie had a heart as big as a whale. Hide, 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 hide. Him, though he was talking, he took her down to Chinatown, and he showed her how to kick the gong around. I had to hide, I had to hide, I had to hide. My name is Carol Heller, and I'm Public Relations Coordinator for the White Plains Library. I want to welcome you to another one of our ongoing programs, Touring the Museum Gallery. The Museum Gallery, which is that lovely exhibition area on the second floor of the library. Our guest today for this tour of the library is a particularly exciting one, because the exhibition that we have now is called Of Minnie the Moocher and Me. And it's an exhibition, uh, exhibition highlighting the life and times of one of America's great and legendary entertainers, the King of Heidi Ho, Cab Calloway. And Cab Calloway was kind enough to join us today to talk to us about the exhibition, about his life, and about 75 years of a wonderful, wonderful life. Cab, I want to thank you for joining us. Thank you. It's a uh really a pleasure to be here and talk with you and uh, meet your wonderful, wonderful audience. Well, the exhibition outside in the gallery is a, really a very exciting visual biography of your life as one of America's top entertainers. As I walk through it, it, it evokes to me the great times of the big bands and the Cotton Club. and. In preparing for talking to you, I took out of the library your biography of uh -huh. Minnie the Moocher and Me, which you wrote, I guess, about eight or ten years ago. Yes, just about. And oh, I see. Oh, that's a. Oh yeah. This this is the book that was. This is the one that was sold, huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's the that's the one. No, there are, there are more of them around. Uh, and I found, you know, your, your life and the people you knew and the things you did <laughs> fascinating. Uh, and I think people would like to more, know more about you. You were born on Christmas Day. Yes. In Rochester. Uh, December the 25th. Right. 1907. So this... Born in Rochester. I was 30 Cypress Street. Uh-huh. And uh, I, I stayed there in uh, uh, Rochester. Uh, as a, a infant, a child, I mean, I, I left there when I was, I was about, um, oh, I say about five years old, five, about five or six years old, and uh, my family went back to what went back to Baltimore because they were originally from Baltimore, Maryland, and uh, we went back there, and uh, I grew up in Baltimore. I got all of my jazz and everything right in Baltimore. Now, you talk about your mother in the book, and yes. she sounds like a very special lady. She was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful woman. I, I tell you, she's... All of her work, everything she did, I mean, is, has come out in me. Uh-huh. I mean, uh, she, she wanted me to, to be a lawyer. Yes, I know. But... Uh, I still, I just couldn't, couldn't make it because, I mean, the, uh, it, the music w was in my blood and uh, she studied, she, she, made, she made me study, mm -hmm. along with, as, as I was taking, uh, in, in, in school, uh, in high school, and she just insisted upon me learning music 
Uh -huh. You had formal voice training. Yes, yes, indeed, yes. I, had, I took, I took voice, oh, about four years. Mm -hmm. Well, four years of voice lesson. Now you with, are... a, with a very fine, fine tutor there uh, in Baltimore. Uh, her name was uh, Ruth Maccabee. Uh huh. And she had been connected with the, 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 the New York Opera. Oh. Yeah, at, at one time. And uh, she was a great singer, wonderful singer. She taught me everything I knew. I mean, I, for years I was around singing, uh, 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 holding my tongue. That. I know, that's a tough open your throat. Yes, I know. Sir. That's a tough thing. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you had an older sister, Blanche, who oh, was yeah. also... Well, I had, that, I had, um, I had two, sisters, two sisters and two brothers. Uh-huh. Uh, that was uh, five, six of us. Mm -hmm. Was it you? Blanche? I can't I know, it's very, when you come from a big family. Blanche, Bernice, Camilla, John, Elma, and myself. Uh-huh. See, and uh, all of us were, were practically the same. They were all, we were all taught by our mother. We all learned music from my mother. But Blanche had the biggest influence Blanche was, on you she going was the first, into show she was the business. First, well, yeah, Blanche was the first one. She, she, uh, she left Baltimore when she was in, uh, she was in college. I think she must have been, oh, maybe 18, 19 years old. And she went to, uh, she came to New York. Mm -hmm. And she got in uh, uh, Ubi Blake's uh, Shuffle Along. The original. Yeah, the original one. She was in that. And uh, then uh, later, she, uh, she she went to another show, uh, and and that that show she came when she came through Baltimore with that with that show, and that's when I I joined her. Ah, uh, now you did go to high school. Yes. You'd been a bit I, of a hellraiser before that, though. Oh well, for I mean, a couple of years. <laughs> I, at least you, that's what you say. And uh, you were quite an athlete in high school. Yes, I was. I, yeah, I was quite a basketball player. Uh, there are. There's a picture yeah. of you in your high school uniform and your award letter out there. Yeah, I, I, I read. I read these guys. Watch these guys on TV playing basketball now. Boy, I tell you, if I was playing now, if they, according to the rules that they play by, I would have been. Well, I, I would have scored more points than uh, than, Larry, than uh, Larry Bird. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I uh, uh, in one game uh, uh, when I was uh, in this with playing basketball, I scored 22 points. That's a lot of points. <laughs> And that was when, you see, when that, the game at that time, uh, every after every basket, uh, the ball would be thrown up through center. So it would take you two hours to play half <laughs> hour game. Oh my goodness! <laughs> after every, and the scores were never as high as it is. The two. I mean, if you got 20 points, 25. That was like comparable to 40 uh, or 50 yeah. now. Yeah. Uh, you played some semi-pro ball too. Yes, I played with the team, uh, the Athenians. And uh, we played, and I played against um, the, the New York Celtics, and, uh, and um, I had a team in Washington, a ball, Palace Laundry, I think it was called Palace Laundry basketball team. And I uh, uh, played against the Lorne Dye, the, the what was our team here in Harlem. They not had a team, the, not the, not the Globetrotters. No, they were later. They were, yeah, they were much later. Or you remember it yeah, later. Yeah. <laughs> when did you first start entertaining? When did you begin to appear on stage? Well, I, I guess uh, I'd say, well, right, right when I was when I was born. Uh huh. <laughs> because I was I was pretty. Uh, so my mother told uh, had uh, told me I was a, a, a real bad kid. Oh dear. Um, infant. I mean, I mm -hmm. scream, yell, and so that's why I got. That's the way how you started screaming and yelling <laughs> up on stage. And she couldn't leave me. I mean, if she, if I'd start screaming and yelling, crying, <laughs> and that it, it, it was very good. It developed my lungs to uh, 
I've been screaming and yelling ever since. <laughs> right, but outside of screaming and yelling at home, uh, you started, was it in Chicago? Well, I start, no, I started, uh, the first, my first stage appearance was in high school. Uh -huh. uh, it was at the, the, the Douglas High School in Baltimore, Maryland. See, they used to have a, 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 a mu musical reviews mm -hmm. uh, every year, you know, like the high schools give the plays and all that. And uh, I, I was, um, I, I sang there in the, in the, in the, in the, in the review. Mm -hmm. And I was, as I was coupled with a very good friend of mine, a piano player, and his name was Jerome Carrington. He he accompanied me in, and we we sang. He could sing too, and we we used to sing together. And uh, it was it was really great. And I think one of the well, one of the first songs that I I did uh, down there was uh, um, uh, a mile of Bami Pound. Oh my God! There'd be no heebie jeebies hanging round. Just Mr. Sweet, we used to do that as a, as a duet, and it was it was all right. It was you? Know, I'm right. sure it was. And then then after that, I mean, uh, I I took up drums, you know. Uh huh. You played I, the saxophone and a little. Played saxophone, yeah. Right. And uh, then, of course, when 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 Blanche came through and it, and I joined her. Right. Then I had I finished high school and then uh, I was. She said she could, uh, she would t take me to Chicago. She was living in Chicago at the time. And uh, I could uh, go to a college out there, Crane College. So I went, le left with her and went on out. And she got me into Crane College and I went to Crane College. Did you, were yeah. you really planning to go to college or did you really planning to go to Chicago's South Side and show business? <laughs> <laughs> Seems to me from the book you had on the two, back yeah. of your mind. <laughs> yeah, that was always instrumental. I mean, that was always there. Uh, of course, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't have any, 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 any bread, you know. And I mean, I had to, they had to live too, you know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they got, Blanche got me a job in a nightclub there. Mm -hmm. In the Sunset Cafe, uh, that was the Dreamland first. It was over on uh, State Street there, and uh, then I later went into the Sunset, and uh, and from the Sunset, that's the one I, pay, I at the Sunset is where I got I got my first band, first and, big band. And they were uh, the Alabamians. Right. The name of the band. Now bands were constituted differently. It wasn't a band leader who ran the group. If, I find it very, found it very interesting is they were almost individual contractors, weren't they? Yes, but this band, well, that's what they, they well, they call that a corporate band. Uh-huh. See, everybody's a shareholder, whatever, you know, when the, whatever the, the fee is that they, we got the plan, we was all divided equally. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you were with that band, got some recognition out there. And, oh, yes, we, yes, indeed, we were all right. We, we um, well, we followed Louis Armstrong. Louis Armstrong was in the in the club uh, before us, uh, and uh, Earl Hines, mm -hmm. father. Yeah, followed Tuppy Hall and uh, uh, Jackson. Oh, see, I can't remember all those guys' names, but uh, they had a great band and. And but we followed the band, and I was I was working in the show at the time this this band came in. The Alabamans, and uh, the Alabamans had a had a had a leader, you know. He was mm -hmm. uh, played the violin. Oh. <laughs> and uh, every time he course he every time he turned around, uh, I was up there with the band. Singing away. Carrying on. Uh huh. I did the same thing with Louis Armstrong. Oh dear. <laughs> so uh, they um, got to a point that I was jumping up there so much here, they would uh, just let me go ahead and conduct the band. And then the, uh, we were there for quite a while, you know, a few months. Uh, and then they decided they wanted to change, change the band, 
And, uh, of course, we had gotten our, our notice to uh, when our time was, uh, was up. And, uh, and then, of course, in the meantime, we had, uh, the, we had booked outside uh, uh, gigs, you know, uh, like uh, uh, we had to come to New York to the Savoy Ballroom. And uh, we worked pretty hard, pretty hard, pretty hard. Now, again, I'm going from the book. You mentioned that the music in New York was different. Oh, yeah than the music in Chicago, right. and that you began to realize differences uh, yeah, when yeah, you got yeah. here. And I, I tried to change the whole format of the band, but uh, uh, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't go for it. Uh, they, they wanted to still, we, we were oh, doing uh, what wasn't, wasn't, wasn't really jazz, well, wasn't really swing. It was very icky, icky music we were mm -hmm. playing. And uh, uh, and a lot of novelty things, you know, uh, songs that do with the band, uh, with the different guys. I, I, I tried to tell them, I tell the guys, I said, look, man, you know, we're going, going into the Savoy, but you're not playing Savoy music. And what happened? Uh, we better get funny what it. happened yeah. when you got to the Savoy. <laughs> We weren't playing Savoy music, and we bombed. I mean, bombed. Uh, I can never forget the band that was in there. Also, see, they had two bands at the Savoy. Had another guy in there named Cecil Scott, mm -hmm. and he was man. He was uh, with his saxophone. He used to put on a high hat and he used to stomp all over the dance floor. With the kids just dancing and. It was, you know, it was like a pipe pipe. Mm -hmm. This guy, all these people dancing and swinging, and the Savoy would be rocking. See, it, it, what years was that? I mean, that was in, uh, that was in twenty, twenty eight. So it was before the crash. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the crash came. Uh, the crash was in twenty nine. Right. Yeah, that's that's when I was in the cotton club then. It all happened very fast. Now, right how did you get to the Cotton Club? Well, uh, of course, after uh, uh, after the band, after we bombed in, in at the Savoy, um, the band broke up. Mm -hmm. and they all went back to Chicago, and I stayed in New York. And. Uh, I went down to see Louis Armstrong. He was, was Louis playing. a big name then? Oh was yeah, he was. He was in uh, Connie's Inn, uh, and they had they had a show uh, there on Broadway uh, called Connie's Hot Chocolates. Mm -hmm. And I went down there to see Louis, and uh, and I saw him. And I said, uh, I want to. I sing a few songs with your band, you know. I mean, if I, you know, you're doubling, you're down to the theater, and you're up mm -hmm. here. I mean, he says, "Oh no," I said, "Well, you know, of course, Louis, he, he, would, he didn't seem like this, but they need a singer in the show." Oh. He says, "I'll get you an audition for Connie Inman," and she, I'm made the audition. They said, come on down to the rehearsal. Now, Connie's Hot Chocolates was a Fat Swallow show, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, so, uh, Fat Swallow and um, Andy Razoff uh, did the music. And it was, uh, well, I, it's, it's still living. And it, right. it was the, the greatest. I mean, uh, we had great songs in there. I had, uh, well, I had, uh, three, I had, I had three songs, uh, Ain't Misbehaving, um, Goddess of Rain, and uh, uh, Sweet Savannah Sue. When the frost is on the pumpkin, Savannah Sue. Yeah, that's right. Did, uh, did you use that later with yeah. or were only and in I, that yeah, show? Of course, I, I, was, I, I was singing to a very beautiful girl. A girl, uh, her name was uh, 
Margaret Sims. Uh -huh. uh, she was a uh, superette in the show, and uh, uh, of course I was uh, uh, the juvenile, uh, and then we we sang "Ain't Misbehaving," and it was sure, but sure it was something else. That's a great song. Yeah. Uh, and from there up to the Cotton Club. Now from there, that, no, we asked, I went out on the road with the uh, Carnish Hot Chocolates, oh. and uh, there was a, a funny thing that happened at the Savoy before we left. Mm -hmm. Before we, we left the Savoy, we had a had a battle of music uh, between two bands. I mean, between my band and uh, and uh, another band called uh, the Missourians, mm -hmm. and a lot with Lockwood Lewis. He he was the conductor of the band, and. Um, the Savoy went after me to come back to do or to take over the Missourians. Oh. Because, uh, of course, the Missourians, they blew us right out of the Savoy. I mean, uh, the, the, the contest uh, was, was so one sided that uh, the band outplayed us, but I outdid the leader of the Missourians. So they, the Savoy says, well, we'll get this guy back and put him with the... Put him in front. Put him with the Savoy, with the, with the Missourians. So I went back, went back, well, finally went back, and, and um, took over, and we had a, had a uh, we played a few gigs at the Savoy, and uh, then we played around New York, uh, right down on the, on the Lower East Side, we played a little spot down there uh, for a few weeks, uh, and then we uh, came up on Broadway to a spot called uh, the Crazy Cat. It was right, it was right across from where the the, the last Cotton Club was. Mm -hmm. that's, that's right where McGinnis's restaurant is. You know, on, right on the corner of 48th and Broadway downstairs they had a little club down there we were playing there now so uh, uh well this particular nice uh the head waiter said uh, some people want to see you want you come over to their table after you after you play, played the set and i said well okay yeah you know, so i went over and uh the guy said, uh, uh, you, uh, you Cab Calloway. I said, all right. I said, well, look, yes. You know, I think I want you in the Cotton Club. I said, Cotton, cotton Club? I said, hey, man, they, that's like telling them you're going to take a man to heaven. Right. <laughs> cotton Club was the greatest place in the, in the world. There was no place like it. So I said, well, I don't know. I said, uh, you have to see my manager. He says, uh, I to, you have to talk to him. So I had a manager and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, that was, uh, he was uh, the owner of the Savoy. Uh-huh. Says, well, anyway, he says, uh, you'll be up at the Cotton Club tomorrow afternoon. Who were these people? <laughs> They were the Cotton Club. <laughs> Those are the boys. They say they were very nice fellows. I, I got along well, with I did, them very good. They couldn't good. work in New York unless you dealt that, with right. them yeah. in those years. That's I mean, they owned everything, didn't right, they? Right, right. Still do. And <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I, I went up, and, uh, and that's, that's the first time I met, I met Duke Ellington. Uh -huh. Oh, man, what a thrill. I just went right out of my mind. So they got together. Uh, 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 when we left this um, club, Crazy Cat, they come to the Cotton Club. Now you said the Cotton Club was heaven, and I've heard about it. Tell me a little of it. You know, what, what, what was it like? I mean, I know you can't do it. You talk about it in your book, and you bring it to such life with the girls and the. Uh, what What was it like to to work there? Well, I don't know. It was beautiful looking, hard, wasn't it? it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it was. Yes. It was a very, very. Uh, it had it had had a southern at atmosphere. Mm -hmm. 
it was uh, 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 now the, the room was oh I'd say you, you could put around 400 people in there and the room was decorated like you were on a plantation mm -hmm. see the band was uh, like it was sitting on the uh, front porch of an old colonial mansion. The band, that's where they were sitting. You could see the door and everything. Then uh, out to the dance floor, uh, they had these old-fashioned post lamps yeah. all the way around the dance floor. And all of the tables uh, uh, would have, have um, had, had gingham cloths and uh, on the, s the sides of it, they were like the boxes, mm -hmm. they, they like uh, uh, like little little log cabins. Oh, like you're sitting in a log cabin. Oh dear. Yeah. Beautiful, just beautiful atmosphere. It's great. I and then, uh, well, of course, we had and the shows there. They were they were un unreal. They were reviews. Yes, be yeah. huge reviews. Yes, well, our shows they 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 run about. About an hour and a half, he said. Mm -hmm. But just, boy, all them beautiful girls and the singers and dancers and the music, and it was just perfect. I mean, it was just. There were some great composers writing oh, the music yes, for, yes, for that yes. now. Yes, yes. Harold Allen and, and uh, Ted Kohler, uh, Holy Carmichael, uh, uh, Ted Bloom. Ruby Bloom, not the Ruby Bloom. Um, um, <laughs> some, did some uh, great. I, I hadn't realized that original songs that came out of the Cotton Club became popular standards. Yes. yes. Well, you got a lot of songs out of the Cotton Club. You know, or Stormy Weather come out of the Cotton Club. Uh, there's no two ways about love. Um, um, between the Devil and the Deep Blue Sea, really? and Whirl on a String. Yeah. What kind of audiences came to see the shows? Oh, carriage trade. It was all carriage trade. And all the high society of New York. Would get <laughs> but blacks or you? you oh yes, we. Yeah. Were they all? Did oh, they also yeah, come? Yeah, we all. Uh, you say in your book then you never wasn't black. It was colored people <laughs> in those years. <laughs> But uh, they, they were, yeah, they were, they were, we had a lot of them there. Uh-huh. Of course, you had to be somebody, you know. I, was it I, expensive to go? Did it cost a lot for an evening? Yes, it was expensive. It was, we had a two dollar and a half cover charge. That was a lot of money in those <laughs> days. <laughs> See? Yeah. And they served dinners, too? Or? Dinners, yeah. We had, we had a, a Chinese cuisine. No, that's something else. It was. No, we, we, we were mixed up all right. We had everything. <laughs> yeah, you sure did. <laughs> and you were on and off there for how many years? Uh, nine years. Nine years altogether. We uh, uh, we moved we moved from Harlem uh, in um, thirty six. Mm-hmm. And uh, we went to uh, Broadway. We went to uh, 48th and Broadway, and we stayed there from 36 to 39. And we closed in 39. That's when they moved in on all the boys, and they really had a tough time. Of course, and of course, I went through the depression there too. You know, yeah. I, I packed a many food basket. As we used to give. Uh, uh, baskets of food to the people in Harlem, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, around Christmas, Five Thanksgiving, then. every Christmas they would give away about, oh, about 500 baskets of food to get all the people in Harlem. And uh, we just we used to have to pack them bags, them baskets, yeah. and then I had to deliver some too. Well, that must have been but a, a thrill for the people, you know, well, to have the king of Heidi Ho come in. And <laughs> how did Heidi Ho start? I forgot the lyric of a song, and 
put in ski bib and the bib and the hidey hole and the hidey hole just stuck there and that was it. And then I later wrote, I wrote Min 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 I put the hidey holes in. And that was, but that, that's a part of it. And it's really your trick. That and your zoot suit were yeah. the trick, which we That had. and the white tails. I didn't, I, I, the tails were from before the zoot suit. Ah. When did the zoot suit first come? Uh, what that year? was, uh, oh, that was when I was at the Zanzibar. That was late. That was in the 40s. After the war? Yeah. Ah. Or, or maybe during, I guess, Nothing as I remember. after the war. Yeah, not after the war. Yeah. Right. The war, as mm. people who don't know it, we call it the war is World yeah. War Two. It's well, we always at war. <laughs> Stay at war. Now, uh, right after that, I guess, then started the big band years, where you traveled and the the, the, the heyday of of your big band, because the Missourians became the Cab Calloway Orchestra. Right? Yes. Yes, well, they become, well, yeah, well, it was Cotton Club, we really called call it Cotton Club Orchestra, uh -huh. Camp Calloway and his Cotton Club Orchestra. And then we toured all over the, all over the United States and Europe, went everywhere. Those were high years, oh, they were, no, we, we played, well, you see, during that time we would, the theaters were very, very, very popular. I know, I remember going yeah. to the Paramount and the seeing Paramount, the bands. Yeah, yeah, the Paramount, the Strand. The Roxy, uh, Radio City, Palace, the uh, Lowe's, uh, Lowe's, uh, uh, no, they're, they're just Lowe's, it was Lowe's State in mm -hmm. Chicago. And uh, we would have a route for a whole year, town to town. Coast to coast. Was it a hard life, or was it, I mean, I get guess. In the, this town, a week. In another town, maybe two weeks. Maybe sometimes one, or three weeks. Oh, it's, oh, it's just like oh, what, what what Count Basie is doing now. I mean, he he's the only one left. That, or for younger people, yeah. the rock groups that go out yeah. on tour from yeah. place to place. And it was it was very exciting, and uh, I, I was, it was great experience. I mean, I. Uh, I learned so much. Oh my goodness! That traveling and meeting people and seeing people—it's just, was just something else. Was yours was one of the first all-colored bands to tour the South? Yes. Was it rough? Well, not well, any rougher than it is now. It's the same. You don't feel it's changed no, at all. Not, nothing, nothing changed. Hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, movies, because when we think, you know, you've really done it all. And one of my favorites is Stormy Weather. When did you go out to Stormy start making? Weather? Well, I, I, had a, I had a few before that. Uh, before the one with Stormy Al Weather, yeah. I did this, uh, The Singing Kid with Al Jolson. That was in, that was real early in my early days. That, that, that was fantastic. You're talking about, like we said, uh, when the mob came to me and said, uh, they want you going to come to the Cotton Club. Mm -hmm. uh, I happened to walk into the office in the, in the Cotton Club one night. Well, you know, I was there, uh, and uh, all of the boys were there. And they were were playing bridge. Not all right. Playing bridge, and one of them said to me, he says. Say, you know, he says, I like you, kid. He says, you, you're, you're nice. You're a real fine little guy. He says, how'd you like, would you like, would you like to be in a picture? I said, well, you would I? I didn't know. <laughs> he still got the telephone, picked up the telephone, and called up the West Coast, and got Al Jolson. So I told Al Jolson, he says, uh, I got a kid here. He's a talented kid. He's all right. He says, uh, "Could have been your picture." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and when he said it, you did it. That was my first picture. Uh huh. With Al Jolson. Then later, I did, um, I did one with uh, Bing Crosby, and, and um, you know the big broadcast. Uh, uh, 
yeah, the yeah, big broadcast happens in front of the next one. And then after that was, then I think it was Stormy. That's really a classic. I mean, that's one that's held up Stormy, for years. Stormy, yeah. No, then, no, in the National House. Huh. They just played that on, on one of the networks uh, about a week or so ago. Do you like seeing them? Yeah. Oh, gee, yeah. And I look at that handsome guy up there. Boy, ooh. Wow. Something else. <laughs> <laughs> and then after, after the, uh, see, after the, uh, no, uh, uh, International House, then it was Stormy. After Stormy was um, uh, uh, Sensations. Sensations of 1945, they first started it, but they, they dropped the title and made the Sensations. That was with Eleanor Powell, and, uh, and uh, then I did one with uh, W.C. Fields. Uh, then, of course, uh, I did one with uh, Matt Cole. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's the St. Louis Blues. Um, with Steve McQueen, the Cincinnati Kid. And then your latest one we'll talk about. Cincinnati Kid. And uh, I think it's about it. Uh, well, there's one more, one. Biggie. Yeah. Which is the oh, you're the Blues Brothers, Brothers yeah. yeah. Now, uh, I think people ought to, ought, ought to know that we are going to be showing Stormy Weather at the library on January 9th, if you're watching this before. And we're going to be showing St. Louis Blues on January 23rd, so you can come up. And you can see the movies and see the exhibition too, and really see this brilliant man in action. <laughs> um, you were on radio. Oh yes. Oh well, that was the beginning of all of us. You know, radio was the thing. That Tell me about your quiz show. show. What was yeah. that? Well, uh, there was a guy named uh, uh, Sammy K uh, K Kaiser. K Kaiser's college. K Kaiser. Yeah. As College of Musical Knowledge. Right. That's, yeah. And he had, had a quiz thing. And we sort of uh, took it after, uh, after, the, after that. Uh, this guy, um, with, he was with NBC, uh, Doug Storer. Mm -hmm. He, he uh, she started it. He got the idea of doing the quizical and having the other characters, you know, like uh, uh, Brother, bro what was his name now? Brother. Brother Treadwell, so uh -huh. I think it was Brother Treadwell. And I, I took two, two, three guys out of the band, uh, and um, they would would help with the contest with the contestants mm -hmm. when they would they would come up to. Uh, and was it how know. hip you were and what yeah. you knew about music? Yeah. Uh -huh. you it was very good. Really. Yeah. We, were, we were on for oh gosh, I guess about six months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was a good. Uh, good all, we did it all over the country. So we didn't do it in one spot, didn't do it in New York, every place I, I travel all around, uh, in different theaters. And now, you, you say you took a couple of guys out of the band. You had some musical greats in your band oh, yeah. when, uh, I'm just looking, Jonah Jones, Dizzy Gillespie, Tyree Glenn, Cozy Cole, yeah. Milton. I mean, you really, <laughs> they left after, so some of them formed their own bands afterwards. Yes, yes. Well, Jonah has one. and. Uh, uh, Dizzy, mm -hmm. Dizzy, he, he's fantastic. That guy. Uh, you had some problems and, when uh, when he was with you, no, wasn't he? Who well, Doc Cheatham? Mm -hmm. Doc Cheatham is still. He's he's got a band. Uh, see who else now? Panama Francis. Panama Francis. Uh, of course, a lot of them. Most of them are gone. Yeah. The greatest of all of them, I thought, was. Was Chewberry. Uh -huh. I think Chewberry was just about the greatest. He's the finest I've ever heard. Uh, you you talk about uh, in in the book again about you and Dizzy Gillespie. Yeah. That uh, you didn't appreciate him when he was playing for you. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate him, but he, you know, he he. I knew he was a good, great musician. Uh -huh. I knew he was a good, real good, good musician, but he was crazy. Uh huh. All right. And the, the, so you know, like just like uh, like um, when he he dropped his horn and it fell on the bell and the the bell went up, you know mm -hmm. went up bent up. So he he kept on playing it. 
it, the, the, the valves and everything would work. Yeah. So he just said, well, and he designed one. That would... That, that's, why, that's how that uh, is on. You see his own sticking up. It seems all the, the, the great musical things are by accident. <laughs> Heidi Ho and Dizzy Swan. Yeah. Uh, then the hard times came with the decline of the big bands. Yeah, the, well, the theaters began to close up. I mean, uh, the, uh, not playing uh, stage shows, mm -hmm. as we called it. And uh, the dancing, the people, they, they weren't dancing any by, right through that period. And things got real tough, they really did. And I I broke up the band, or I, I cut it down to, to uh, uh, Seven pieces, I think it was. From fifteen, I took it down to seven. Mm -hmm. and then I took it to five. Mm. And then I took it to four. But I kept going. Mm -hmm. And I got managed to get a few gigs along the way. And uh, it can't be easy having been so, you know, far up. To yeah, it was it was difficult. It was very difficult. I think it's but I, I, it was. It was that doing through going through that time is when uh, uh, Vegas, Las Vegas, and uh, Reno. That they they saved me. I mean, I went to, I did around oh, about eight or ten weeks between um, Vegas and uh, and Reno, mm -hmm. and they kept me going. It was then, and it was during that time is when. Uh, they came after me for Porgy and Bess. That's what I was. Now, when somebody thinks of sport and life, they think of you. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't care. And it ain't necessarily so. There's nobody who can sing it yeah. the way. I was sport and life, yeah. It was great sport You weren't and life. in the original, though. Yeah. But see, now they call me, instead of calling me sport and life, they call me life's old sport. <laughs> oh, that. <laughs> but how did you, how did, this second production, how did you become Sport and Life on Broadway? Well, uh, Blevins Davis came after me. Uh, uh, see, the State Department uh, uh, underwrote the whole, the whole thing. And uh, he, of course, he had the money. I didn't worry about it. Mm -hmm. And he came, came to me and asked me if I would take, take, take the part. And I thought it over, and I, because I, the, the, the part was, was originally for me when it, uh, from, from his concept, because uh, Gershwin used to come to the Cotton Club, mm -hmm. and, and he's, uh, and I, I well, it's like a hand right in a glove chair, when yeah. you see you do it. And he, um, he really patterned it, it the, 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 the role uh, sort of after me. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, this is a great shot, I think I'll do, I'll try it. And of course, now uh, the show had um, had uh, was already open. I think it had, it was open. It opened in now uh, in Dallas mm -hmm. at the Dallas State Fair there. Um, and he, I, I accepted the part, and he, he sent me the score, sent me the book, the whole thing, and. After I finished in Reno, I think it was, then I came in and uh, started uh, uh, rehearsing uh, in, in Dallas. We have that you know, score, by the way. <laughs> I, you you <laughs> yeah. so kindly gave us and oh, your costume in the show. Great score, yes. Who was in the show with you then? Uh, Warfield. Mm -hmm. Uh, Laverne Hodgson mm -hmm. and Leanne. Leontine Price, uh, Yearly Leonardus. I think when people think of Porgy and Bess, they think of that as the show that that most of the world has seen. You know, the 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 production of it. Yeah, that that was that was the best. Yeah, uh, it's been on film. I because yeah. I saw it. And yeah, see, I don't know if we got when we opened in. Uh, and uh, um, Vienna. Mm -hmm. we, we played it there at the Vienna Opera House. 
and uh, that whole Vienna Symphony played played the score, and that was the first time I've ever heard it with the symphony. And I have a tape of it, and uh, you, you, you could take a part of it. It really was fantastic. And that Leontine Price was out there, boy. It really is a classic. It's a, an American folk opera. Well, I, don't, I don't think... It's the greatest, the greatest. And when the curtain went down at the end, they had to pull it up 24 times. 24 times. <laughs> Back up and down 24 times. My goodness. Now, we did, we, 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 we stayed, we were in Vienna for two weeks. And we went to, uh, went to uh, Berlin. Berlin, and from Berlin we went to to uh, London, and from London to France, and from France back here, back to, that's when we opened at the Ziegville. Right. And we came back to the Ziegville and stayed there for about eight months. It was a great, great show, yeah. and I enjoyed doing it. You've done a lot of them, though, a, a good ones. There's Hello, Dolly, oh, yes. which that was Mr. Vandergelder. Yeah. And that's you know, a funny thing. I just got a card from Pearl the other day. I got a Christmas card from her. Uh huh. And uh, she's doing a, a, a thing on TV, uh, Mama's Daughter. Oh, uh, that new is show. It, is it, is it, uh, I think it's that's if that's the new NBC show that's going to come yeah. on. She's a very talented woman. I know. You know, you're talking we about... We had a wonderful time with girl and I in Hello, Dolly. It was a good time. Yeah. It's a good show. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, others... We, st yeah, we, we stayed on Broadway with that show for about, uh, oh, about two years. Mm-hmm. Then we toured it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we went all... We did, uh, we did Philadelphia, Chicago. Uh, Los, San Francisco, Los, uh, Los Angeles, and let me see, I, I left it when they were in San Francisco. I mean, you've really... No, they, because they were going back, and uh, of course, I, 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 don't, I don't think, uh, Lee and Tien didn't, didn't go back with it. That's when they did uh, uh, Russia. Mm -hmm. They came back and then they took it over to Russia, Spain, it went all over, but I, I didn't make that. Yeah. You know, you, people's names come up as, as, we, as we've been talking, and I, if I give you a name, would you just give me a little capsule of what you thought they were like? Like if I say Lena Horn. Lena Horn, that's a doll. That's the prettiest name you could have given me. Uh-huh. <laughs> Because she is a sweet woman, wonderful girl. Lena Horn was in the cotton because she was in the, in the in the chorus line, you know. Mm -hmm. I can remember uh, her mother would bring her to work. She was very young. Oh, she's about 14. Yeah, she 14. says, people think I'm 100 because, yeah. you know. About 14 years. Yeah. Hadn't been as many of that. She was, and she was light, everybody liked me. And uh, the, the boys, they, they protected her. They, they did take like, care. Yeah. Right. yeah. All right. She was, she was beautiful. Bill Robinson. That was great, great guy. <laughs> we did a couple of shows together. I have about it now. Like Bill Robinson, I think the greatest thing he ever did was the, uh, the Makata. Mm -hmm. on the, uh, but well, there's a character for you. He was... Oh. How? <laughs> he was the king of the walk. Oh. And he told everybody what to do and how and when to do it. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. W.C. Oh, go ahead. But a, a great performer, one of, the, one, of the great, one of the greatest dancers. I haven't seen anyone like him. 
W.C. Handy. W.C. Handy was a sweet. He he was in the downtown Cotton Club. He was in the, in the show down there. Mm -hmm. He used to play the play his trumpet. Oh, gee, he was fading and doing it that was a long time. He was old then. Mm -hmm. You know, he was blind. He, he couldn't see. Oh, yeah. yeah. He had lost his sight. And his, his, his wife, wife used to lead him around, take him everywhere. You mentioned the Duke, <laughs> Ellington. Well, that's the man. Well, the Duke, see, we, he and I, and we come along at the same time, you mm -hmm. see. And uh, right today, I mean, uh, I've seen people come up to me and say, Hey, Duke, yes, sure. You, they, there was a very famous man who said that to you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you tell, it's a funny story. <laughs> you, you're referring to the time in the, in the White House right. with, uh, with Nixon? Right. At his, bir at his birthday party. Yes. At Duke's, uh, Duke's birthday party. At Duke's birthday party. Going down the receiving line. And he, uh, Duke Ellington. <laughs> he said, oh, I mean, cab cow. It's funny. <laughs> uh, and but he and I, well, you know, we, 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 we were, were always, I don't know, people always looked at us as, as the same person. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. They'd call him cab. Call me do. But your music was so different. Yes. I, but we came up at the same yeah. time, and we both gained our popularity at the same time. Yeah. And that, that's that simulation. That, that's the only thing it is. Something that. And if because, <laughs> like, we got so, uh, uh, when, when, when we'd see each other, I'd say, hey, cab. <laughs> He'd say, hey, hi, what do you know, do? <laughs> and then right up to the time. You know, you, you talk about that you have two, that you had really two lives. Mm -hmm. One life on stage and one life with your family. And your family, who are lovely, joined us at your birthday party mm -hmm. here. Tell me a little about them, your wife, your, your daughters. Well, you see, uh, off stage, I'm a different person, mm -hmm. entirely different than what you see me on stage. And uh, I, and I, I, I think that's because of the fact that I uh, uh, always try to make someone happy, mm -hmm. and I always try to entertain them, and make them happy. That's been my effort, my my ambition in life mm -hmm. is to do that, and I've done that. All these years, right, and that and that makes me different because on stage I do this, but off stage I'm yourself, very soft, easygoing guy. Of course, you know if you, you have don't, a don't ask me, don't ask me to cut the cards because I might split the table. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I, I, I'm sort of a... You have some you know, very talented daughters, though. Yes, I have some very talented daughters, yeah. And I have talent. Well, my, my wife is talented. She, she sure is. is. A, my dad, she's, she's something else. Well, Nuffy Calloway really put together this exhibition mm -hmm. here and mm -hmm. was the driving force behind it. Yeah. And really this whole, I think, you're very lucky to have a lady be like this because this whole 70, you know, cab 75 is kind of, she's been the driving force yes, yes. behind it and behind the scholarship fund, mm -hmm. which is something new That's this right. year, too. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, people would like to know that uh, there will be a number of events this year. And uh, there will be cab, Chris, and Alice, which Cab will appear with his uh -huh. daughter at Alice Tully Hall. It's January 2nd. January 2nd, yeah. And that's sponsored by the Council for the Arts, and that's free. Yeah. But then there's going to be a big benefit fundraiser for the Cab Calloway Scholarship mm -hmm. Fund, which will be to benefit young medical students at New York Medical College, and it will be for performing arts students at, at Westchester Community College. That's right. 
have you was there a reason you went in these two directions or these were the, was what Nuffy decided and you or well it's more or less what what she decided but uh, it, it you know being up here living here in this uh, this, this neighborhood for all of these years and I, I know all of these places and I've been to them mm -hmm. and I've seen them grow up and uh, that's why I just uh, make my, uh, con con uh, give myself to help somebody else. You know, the latest thing you did, which introduced, you know, I, when I mentioned to my kids that I was going to interview Cab Calloway, they got all excited mm. because they saw you in the Blues Brothers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so a whole new generation has been introduced to you. What do you think of, of today's music and what, how, why the kids reacted so positively to what well, you do. I didn't change any of the No, music. your music was the same. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I couldn't give you an answer for that or why. It's just a form of entertainment that they, they like, that the kids like. And do you find that they're, right, that they're wrecking that, you know? Oh, yes, yeah. I have a whole brand new audience. I mean, I... I, I was introduced to all millions and millions and more that sure <laughs> than I already know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it was yeah. like uh, there's be, to be able to have the kind of music that goes from one generation to mm -hmm. another. There has to be something very special about it. Oh yeah. Well, my music will, will go on forever. Many the mucho. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, it'll it, be forever. Yeah. Uh, when you came to the party here, what were your feelings when you walk in and see really your whole life spread out in front of you? Uh, I said they did a terrific job. Mm -hmm. The way they set this up was, was really something else. Wow. And it was thrilling when I walked in and saw it all. It was just... You know, people, I don't think they realize, but we did have a reception and we recreated the Cotton Club, and I think it was a real surprise yes, to Cab. Really he didn't was. didn't expect to to see and to see the scope of the yeah. exhibition that is here because it's it's every time it goes from the from his early days through the 30s and through posters, some character. There's there's you with sport and life back there, and mm -hmm. maybe we will get a chance to take a look at some of those things sure. too. Well, I hope that a lot of people will come. They've been coming to see the exhibit because it is as you said and as I will say again it is fantastic well, I do want to thank you for coming and spending the time with us and letting us know you off stage and if you want to know more about Cab Calloway come to the Museum Gallery of the White Plains Library the exhibition will be here through January 31st and it's if, you, if you've never seen him perform or if you have it's really a pleasure to go through this this wonderful wonderful era thank you for being with us and thank you <laughs> <laughs>
loved him though he was talking he took her down to chinatown and he showed her how to kick the gong around i had to hide to hide to hide 